One of the most tactically refined areas in all of Counter-Strike is Banana on Inferno. As the main pathway to the B bomb site, Banana has been home to many new strategies over the years. And if you look online, there's no shortage of content on what the best tactics are to fight for banana control. But how exactly did these tactics come about? What was the original thought process to create them? So in this video, we'll go through the history of Inferno Banana Control and go step by step through its biggest tactical breakthroughs from the past decade. I hope you enjoy. Let's first start with why having banana control is so important in the first place. By capturing banana, you get a certain advantage depending on which side you're on. As a CT, controlling banana denies the T's from hitting the B site, allowing for a stronger defense to be made at A. But as a T, controlling banana creates a direct threat to the B site. This forces the CTs to spread their defense between the two bomb sites, making it easier for T's to attack either one. As Inferno has been played for over two decades across four major versions of Counter-Strike, we'll be focusing specifically on CSGO for this video, which dates back to 2012. There were two distinct versions of Inferno played in CSGO's lifetime. Most players will be familiar with the most recent version that released in 2017, but there was also a prior version that came with the game's release in 2012. Although there are notable differences in the geometry and the visuals between these two versions, Banana in particular has maintained the same general layout. When we look on HLTV, the very first set of demos played on Inferno came from ESWC 2012, CSGO's first big international event. Back then, it was common to see CTs leave Banana entirely to the T's and simply defend from the bomb site. This was because CTs spawned further away from Banana than the T's did, which meant the T's gained more control first. This fundamental idea gave rise to one of the earliest tactics for the CTs, and that was to throw two high explosive grenades down Banana at the start of the round. These HE grenades would damage T's as they entered Banana, making them softer targets. This damage made it easier for CTs to hold if T's continued to progress. But ESWC 2012 was special. That's because it was the first big LAN event where Molotovs were allowed. This did not sit well with players and teams because they thought Molotovs were too overpowered. As other competitions actually banned their usage, they wanted ESWC to do the same. Older versions of Counter-Strike only contained HEs, flashes, and smokes, so Molotovs brought a completely different dynamic to the game. Nearly every team used Molotovs on the CT side at this event. It gave them the ability to break apart entire rushes and to flush out positions without having to clear them physically. After the event, the consensus was that it slowed the game down too much and that it was too much of a risk to go for any fast rushes. This only confirmed what the players thought. A couple weeks later, Valve adjusts the Molotov. The update makes Molotov spread less, reduced the tagging when running through them, and made them extinguishable by smokes. Molotovs continued to be allowed in competitive play, but its usage drops significantly over the next few tournaments, and actually declines to a point where they're nearly extinct. With the cost at $850, it simply wasn't worthwhile relative to the other grenades. Going into 2013, Molotovs fell out of favor, but the double HE still remained a key part of how CTs handled Banana. They also figured out a way to throw the HEs from the site, ensuring they couldn't take damage from the T's. But these nades alone weren't enough to fight for Banana. CTs needed something more. Whenever CTs pushed Banana, the main problem was that they had to deal with fighting multiple positions at once. But the most common position was at the bottom of Banana, where the T steps are. This is where the smoke grenade comes in. CTs have already been using smoke grenades to block this position, but it normally came after already clearing Banana. They needed a way to smoke it before clearing it. What was special about Inferno was that it was possible to throw grenades over the buildings. This wasn't always the case on other maps. Other maps often had invisible walls, called skyboxes, that would prevent such long-distance grenade throws. For the next 8 months, teams spent time searching for the smoke, knowing that it would make the fight for Banana much easier. So by the time the first major comes around, Dreamhack Winter 2013, nearly every team has figured out a bottom banana smoke from CT spawn. They were commonly thrown from two locations. One was from beside the well, and the other was closer to the arch side. This smoke made it much easier for CTs to push down and fight, knowing that T's at the bottom of banana were smoked off. By having this smoke, it forced T's to make a decision, either stay behind the smoke and give it up, or go past it and attempt to fight the push. 
If T's gave Banana up, it allowed CT's to push up close. This made it difficult to re-enter since CT's could be hiding in so many different positions. With the discovery of the bottom banana smoke from CT spawn, CT's now had a couple options. They could fight using the HE's, using the bottom banana smoke, or even with both. But T's realized that this smoke didn't prevent them from getting into good positions at banana. If they had the closest spawn, they could actually slip into positions like the logs for cover. The logs was a particularly good spot because having just one player there could derail the CT push. To deal with this, CTs brought something back from the dead, Molotovs. Molotovs have generally been disregarded as an option since the nerf in late 2012. Although still in the game, CTs primarily stuck to using HE grenades. An update back in August 2013 reduced the prices of fire grenades, allowing some teams to explore its usage. Complexity was one of the first teams to really try incorporating Molotovs into their play. At the first major, they were the only team on the CT side that actually used more Molotovs and HE grenades at Banana. As time went on, more and more teams gave it a try. CT side Molotov usage at Banana steadily increased from event to event, but it wasn't until ESL 1 Cologne 2014 where we really saw the effect that Molotovs had. These Molotovs made it so much easier to grab Banana Control, by either burning T's alive, or by flushing them out into the open where CT's could capitalize. By late 2014, Molotovs became an important part of CT Banana Control among the top teams. The combination of the bottom banana smoke along with the Molotovs made it difficult for T's to break. Initially T's tried to throw Molotovs back, but this wasn't enough on its own. As smokes last longer than Molotovs, CT's could still take Banana Control. It was now on the T's to come up with something of their own. Fundamentally, the only way to counter a smoke in CSGO is to find a way to see past it. And at the bottom of Banana, there's a flower pot nearby. This flower pot is short enough that players can jump on it. The flower pot gives a bit of extra height, but it's not wide enough to actually look at Banana. This is where boosting comes into play. Boosting is the term used when one player jumps on top of the other player's head, typically done to get a player onto an elevated position or to peek over a tall object. Boosting has existed for a very long time, as early as the days of CS 1.6, and in this case, boosting is used to see over the banana smoke. This is possible because the bottom player offers slightly more walkable ground for the top player to stand on. This allows them to peek past the wall and actually see banana. This boost was a great way to punish CTs pushing down banana. Even if CTs knew that it was happening, the boosted player was hard to spot. And because the boost was further back behind the smoke, T's were able to contest without facing the possible HE's and Molotovs. The first time this boost was seen was in April 2014, during the SLTV Star Series 9. Mouseports were the first team to attempt it in an official. As more and more teams started to adopt the boost, it became something that CT's had to expect if they were fighting for Banana. This prompted CT's to start leaning along the left wall to avoid being seen. But they could still be seen if the bottom banana smoke landed too deep. As a running throw, it wasn't easy to get the smoke to land the exact same way every time. So a completely different approach was explored. So far, CTs have only used the open skyboxes to smoke the bottom of banana from CT spawn, but much more was possible. It was found that the open skyboxes actually allowed players at the arch side of A to throw smokes at B. This gave A players the opportunity to help defend the B site by smoking the entrance at any point in the round. The idea was that if T's were getting banana controlled despite the early grenades, the re-smokes from A would still make it hard to take the B site. This led to a new strategy. CT's thought, what if we just smoked B for the entire round? In 2015, Envy was a team that embraced this idea of giving up banana entirely and committed to re-smoking B as much as possible. Here's an example where the first two smokes come from the A side, while the last two come from the B defenders to make a total of four smokes at B. This made it extremely hard for T's to push in because the cycling of smokes denied any clear openings. In theory, it was a great strategy, but it was much harder to put in practice as A players often needed their smokes to defend against certain situations on their side of the map. So teams simply settled on using the smoke whenever it was convenient. This idea of smoking the B entrance from A had been known about for a very long time. One of the first people to throw a smoke from Arch to B was Angel all the way back at Copenhagen Games 2013. 
the open skyboxes also allow teams to throw what's known as the car smoke. Like the bottom banana smoke, the smoke is thrown from CT spawn at the start of the round. The main difference was that it landed in front of the car, which is much closer to CT spawn. This allowed CTs to hold the smoke in time, making it impossible for T's to beat it. With this control, CTs could then re-smoke it. Since the flower pot boost was so strong, the idea behind the car smoke was to simply ignore the rest of banana and focus only on the car area instead. If CTs were forced back into the site, then the re-smokes from A would become an option. As the car smoke started becoming more popular, some teams actually favored it over the bottom banana smoke, resulting in a slight decline. The idea behind simply holding car with the smoke was seen by a Nexus back in 2012, while the lineup from CT Spawn was seen by 3D Max in early 2013. The combination of these ideas finally come together three years later. This also created an opportunity for new plays. At MLG Columbus 2016, we see a boost on car over the smoke. This is aggressive, this boost above the smoke, this oh, oh, he didn't quite see it, now he took back and he's gonna be carrying him with oh no idea he's there. Initially, T stayed away from the car smoke, but eventually they found ways around it, either by using a flash to push through it, or by using this pixel walk that existed in front of logs to spot over it. But in April 2016, Valve made the decision to remove Inferno from the active map pool, leaving this match between Virtus Pro and Navi as the last time we see this Inferno in Tier 1. A year later, Valve unveiled a new version of Inferno and it returns into the active map pool, completely fresh with a number of changes. The most impactful one is that the skybox has been adjusted, no longer allowing CTs to smoke B site from other areas of the map. Common smokes like the bottom banana smoke and the car smoke are no longer possible from CT spawn, and this also includes the smokes from the arch side. Dreamhack Las Vegas 2017 starts as the first tier 1 tournament on the new version of Inferno. Although the bottom banana smoke couldn't be thrown from spawn anymore, the shortened wall near car made it easier to simply throw it from the entrance. CTs that threw a bottom banana smoke along with the molotovs would get banana with ease. That's because what wasn't mentioned in the notes was that the flower pot at the bottom of banana was removed. Tees no longer had a way to counter the bottom banana smoke. CTs also brought back the car smoke from the previous version. Although it couldn't be thrown from CT spawn anymore, it was still possible from just outside B. This smoke denied any possible rushes, but it also gave them the flexibility to take banana after it faded. If they elect to use it, the spray downs and the aggression oh, that Daisy so continues cool. to put onto them, it does it again. It's a Molotov that burns them alive, the stacked Molotovs. The shortened wall mentioned earlier, known as the half wall, also made it possible to find kills by boosting. But the half wall actually created an opportunity to use one of the most common positional tactics, jump spotting. Jump spotting is the act of jumping to spot enemies. Rather than peeking in and out of cover, jumping is much safer because the player reveals much less of themselves. Since jumping causes you to be inaccurate while shooting, jump spotting is strictly done to gain information on what the enemy team might be doing. As this mechanic was present on other maps, for example Beyond Mirage, teams used it right away. But there was one team in particular that knew how to maximize the jump spot. At the PGL Krakow Major in 2017, Big was seen jump spotting at Banana. Like most other teams, this wasn't uncommon. The difference was that Big found a way to do it without being seen. If we look at both perspectives, the CT can clearly see the T, while the T cannot see the CT. To pull it off, they actually used an existing mechanic called the Silent Jump. The silent jump was a way to jump without being heard. It involved crouching before jumping, and then letting go of crouch while in the air. Big discovered that silent jumping created a mismatch in what the player would see relative to their player model. It turned out that the point of view was actually significantly higher than what their player model would suggest. This allowed them to spot enemies without being seen, giving them advantages in both fights and rotations. This sparked huge controversy as there was debate on whether this exploit should be allowed teams gathered to talk about the best way forward. Admins made the official decision to allow it, but teams made gentlemen's agreements not to use it. After the major, what's known as the big jump bug was patched, no longer allowing players to use the exploit. Despite this, CT still had a variety of approaches to fight Banana, while the T's, with only the T car Molotov, continued to struggle. In the second half of 2017, this is when it all changed. Tees are finally able to find the necessary tools. 
They first tackled the situation when CTs had already taken banana control. Usually once CTs take banana, they leave a player at the car to hold B alone. As this player was often jump spotting or opping, T's needed a safe way to force them off the position. That's where flashbangs come into play. This flash, known today as the window flash, goes over the building and blinds any CTs in the upper portion of banana. Initially, the flash was used as a way to regain banana control once CTs took it. But over time, T's started using it at the starter rounds as a way to prevent CTs from peeking down banana. This created an avenue for T's to move up banana more safely. The earliest versions of the window flash were thrown in early 2017 by Gambit and Virtus Pro. As you might notice, the lineup was actually quite different. It was only as teams started implementing jump throws that the actual window lineup was created. The next issue that T's dealt with was that CT's liked using the car smoke to block them from pushing up. The T's answer was to simply wait for the smokes to fade. In 2016, the round time was actually increased by 10 seconds for the purpose of making smoke grenades less effective. This made waiting a viable strategy. In addition, if CTs actively held the car smoke, T's had what's known as the half wall flash at their disposal. This flash is thrown from the bottom of banana and pops just over the half wall. It's designed to blind CTs positioned at the entrance and the sandbags, as the window flash doesn't go far enough to reach them. Although a variation of this flash was used in the old Inferno, the new Inferno made it better. T's could now stand much closer to the choke point, while in the past they were further away. The half wall flash was sometimes combined with the Molotov, making it difficult for CTs to hold. Although the very first half wall flash was originally thrown by Astralis, North was actually the first team to use the flash more regularly before it started spreading to other teams. Both the window flash and the half wall flash found their place in the meta. The window flash was useful for taking banana at the start as well as retaking it, while the half wall flash created a way to pass through the car smoke, causing CTs to actually reevaluate its usage. Since the flower pot boost no longer existed, holding only the top of car was no longer necessary. But CTs needed more ways of fighting for banana. Although the method of using two Molotovs with the bottom banana smoke was successful, the issue was that Molotovs were expensive. With Molotovs at $600, it wasn't always possible to buy them in situations when money was tight. So CTs came up with something new. It was actually back in May 2017 during the EPL Season 5 Finals where we saw what's widely known as the Fallen Flash for the first time. This flash is thrown from the CT spawn entrance of B and pops just over the roof. It blinds T's who are running up banana, making it a great way for CTs to fight without needing Molotovs. The Fallen Flash was simple, cheap, and effective. By the end of 2017, teams caught on right away. And now, the fight for banana control was starting to get interesting. At the start of 2018, T's made a new addition. They started throwing what's known as the Fanatic Smoke. It was a rather interesting smoke because typically if T's threw smokes, they'd be to block the front of car. But this smoke actually landed past the car. The idea behind the Fnatic smoke was to stop CTs from holding the car choke point from the top of Banana. The most common positions were the sandbags in the corner, so the Fnatic smoke landed past the car to block these positions while still leaving room for T's to push in. This allowed T's to grab car control essentially uncontested. As the name suggests, Fnatic were the first ones to use this smoke in late 2017. A few months later, teams like Virtus Pro quickly added it to their playbook. As a result, the Fnatic smoke rose to popularity. It was an easy way to force CTs back into the site if they are playing banana passively. However, despite everything the T's have created so far, they still haven't come up with an answer to the CT Molotovs. For the last 5 years, ever since CT started using Molotovs, T's often took one of two choices. Either run through the fire ready to fight, or simply avoid the fire and find the gaps where it isn't spreading. But there was one option that hadn't been explored very much yet, and that was to use smoke grenades to extinguish them. The ability to extinguish Molotovs has existed ever since the Molotov nerf all the way back in 2012. It was only now in 2018, 6 years later, that T started using the mechanic more proactively. By extinguishing the early CT Molotovs, it gave space for T's to stay in banana. If T's are rushing, they often designated one player to run with their smoke out specifically to extinguish the incoming Molotov. T-side extinguishes at Banana began to rise. 
by late 2018 it hit 12%. It may not sound like a lot, but this used to only be 1% in the past. Using raw numbers in the second half of 2014, there was only one Molotov extinguished out of about 1,300, while in the first half of 2018, there were 233 Molotovs extinguished out of almost 2,500. The extinguishes were a key breakthrough for both sides because it removed the idea that Molotovs were hard barriers. There was a way to pass through them. As a result, we saw newer tactics emerge. Especially, but Cloud9, they exploiting it and getting a great scoreline here. Rez will drop the smoke and find the first kill. That smoke is designed to extinguish whatever Molotov's coming towards him. It looked like he missed it almost, but that's by design, I assure you. By the second half of 2018, CTs were chaining these plays together. Here we see an example where the Fallen Flash gets combined with extinguishing the car Molotov to get an opening kill. This got the T's thinking. The extinguishing mechanic has really only been used in one particular way. A Molotov initially comes in, and then the smoke is used to extinguish it. But there's a bit more to this mechanic. If you swap the order and have the smoke come first, and then the Molotov second, the Molotov is extinguished right away. At Banana, CTs often used Molotovs for two spots, the close half wall and at the broom. So in September 2018, Navi threw the very first pre-smoke. As planned, when the broom Molotov came in, it extinguished immediately. By denying the small top, it created space for T's to take position past the bottom banana smoke. A few months later, Liquid came up with the second pre-smoke. This targeted the close half wall Molotov. As the small top was often used to prevent rushes, pre-smoking it meant that T's no longer had to run with their smoke out. As the CT Molotovs had plagued the T's for so long, the pre-smokes finally put an end to it. T's now had a way to maintain positioning at Banana. So at the IEM Katowice 2019 Major, teams like G2 and MRBR adopted the pre-smokes, creating opportunities to contest Banana much more freely. With the rise of pre-smokes, it was now on the CTs to find new ways of fighting back. By 2019, T's have developed so many ways to take Banana, which often force CTs back into the site. As Banana is such a vital area of the map, finding a way to retake even part of Banana became a priority. This is when what's called the retake nades started to emerge. The retake nades consist of a smoke for the half wall choke point and a Molotov for the car. The smoke blocked off any T standing further back, while the Molotov flushed out players next to the car. The combination of grenades allowed CTs to recapture the top portion of Banana. The idea of re-aggressing the top of Banana has been around for a while. One of the earliest versions of this idea was all the way back in 2012, where CTs would simply throw one flash from spools to fight Ts as they reached the top of Banana. Later in 2017, it transformed into a handful of CT teams, occasionally throwing Molotovs from the site to push Ts away from Banana. It wasn't until now that players started combining the Molotov with the smoke. The smoke was the important piece because it allowed CTs to reposition anywhere within the car area, forcing Ts to re-clear. With the retake nades, usage of the Fnatic smoke began to drop. This is because the retake nades offered CTs a way to recapture the space that the Fnatic smoke would take. The first team to throw both the smoke and the Molotov was G2 all the way back at ESL1 Cologne 2018, but it wasn't until a full year later that it spread among other teams. A separate meta developed around the retake nades. As they became more common, Ts came up with ways to counter them. Ts initially thought to boost behind the half wall, since the smoke didn't cover the entire entrance. When CTs recognized that this was becoming a common counter, they began throwing HEs behind the half wall to prevent the boost. The Ts adjusted. Rather than boost directly behind the half wall, they decided to use the logs further back instead. All this did was move the target. CTs then figured out a way to HE stack the boost on logs. It became a guessing game of which counters each team would use. Along with the retake nades, CTs also found a new way to fight. Typically when CTs peek down banana, they extinguish the T car molotov by either throwing the smoke off the corner or by simply aiming at the fire directly. CTs figured out a better way to do this. What's known as the Furia smoke was brought to light at the top level. The Furia smoke is thrown from the B side of CT spawn and lands just next to the car. The smoke does two things, it extinguishes the typical car molotov and it leaves a gap on the side for CTs to peek banana. But not only that, the gap was actually a one way as the player next to the smoke could see the player at the bottom of banana much more easily than the other way around. The smoke was extremely powerful, just the presence of the smoke alone made T's cautious of somebody peeking. 
Although Furia made this smoke popular, they weren't the first team to use it. In March 2019, it was actually Complexity that used it at ECS Season 7 about 6 days before Furia did. With the newly found Furia smoke, CT's now created an avenue to directly punish T's using the pre-smokes. By late 2020, it reached nearly full adoption among the top teams, and the Furia smoke continued to dominate well into 2021. With the ability to go behind or in front of the smoke, CTs were constantly catching T's off guard. So in early 2022, T's made an adjustment. T's began smoking the car choke point more frequently to deny these pushes. Having this smoke, even if it wasn't perfect, closed off the gap in the Furia smoke to ensure that CTs couldn't peek down. As throwing the smoke freehand from the bottom of banana wasn't always reliable, set lineups became more popular. Set lineups for the T car smoke have existed even on the old Inferno back in 2012, but it was only now in 2022 where the smoke became necessary. It didn't fully replace the Molotov, but throwing it more often discouraged CTs from peeking down banana, and a side benefit was that it can be thrown alongside the typical car Molotov, making it harder for CTs to commit. As the T car smoke became more popular, it ultimately reduced usage of the Furia smoke. If T's were smoking car, then there was no use for CTs to be throwing the smoke. The drop in usage then opened up a play for the T's. Auto works in. Yeah, that, but like, we shouldn't forget the fact that they okay. struggled massively on their T side as well. Well, they're anticipating Banana from the looks of it. Got Aura over here. It's going to be Zywoo that rings out first. No in way. Second. He's had enough. He's going to keep going through it. He doesn't really care, does That's he? That's four here again. Oh, oh, he he wins this famous play from Zaiwu at the CS Summit in 2019 serves as the foundation for something that CTs still haven't been able to stop. It's the jump on top of the logs. By being on top of the logs, T's are able to get a deep, elevated angle on CTs coming into banana while also avoiding most commonly thrown CT Molotovs. But in 2022, this play has been elevated by one tweak, a pre-smoke just before jumping up. Molotovs will still burn players standing on top of logs, so the smoke removed that possibility. The smoke created cover for the T to fall back if necessary, while also acting as a one-way. This greatly enhanced the play, making it extremely hard for CTs to fight Banana. This forced the CTs to come up with something new, so in 2023, they came up with the mid-Banana smoke. The mid-Banana smoke lands just next to logs. The smoke goes high enough to prevent T's from peeking on the top of logs and blocks out the potential one ways that T's could have when throwing their own smoke. Since T's had developed ways to bypass the bottom banana utility, having the smoke land closer avoided all the possible positions that T's could be in. This allowed CT's to fight on their own terms, and once the smoke faded, they had the option to throw a bottom banana smoke to take further control. Interestingly, the smoke had actually been seen in the past. In 2018, Ghost Gaming was the first team spotted using the smoke. Later in 2020, teams like North and Big used it briefly, but it still didn't spread to the other teams. It was only as T's evolved their approach that the smoke finally became a mainstay in 2023. But as teams discover ways around the mid-banana smoke, there's a big reset. CS2 makes a full release in September 2023. With CS2 directly replacing CSGO, ESL Pro League Season 18 finishes as the final Tier 1 event, and with the new game comes a new map. With the launch of CS2, Inferno is one of two overhauled maps in the competitive pool. The map comes with a massive visual update with one big change. The skyboxes have opened up once again. With the new changes, the community was quick to find smoke lineups, mostly revisiting the ones used in the older version back in 2012-2016. But the real test was whether or not we'd see usage in pro play. IEM Sydney 2023 was the first tier 1 tournament to feature CS2. As expected, the bottom banana smoke from CT spawn makes a return. The mid banana smoke also translates over but with a slight tweak. With the open skyboxes, it can now be thrown directly from CT spawn. In terms of flashes, the window flash, half wall flash, and fallen flash make the transition with slightly different lineups. The retake nade still exists as an option for the CTs, but something that no longer does is the Furia smoke. In CS2, smoke behavior was changed so players see them identically regardless of how they're positioned around them. This meant that the one-way mechanic that made the smoke so strong in CSGO is no longer possible in CS2. On the opposite side, throwing the T-car smoke using the set lineup is more difficult, 
there's now a building that goes over Banana from above, making it harder to replicate. But CS2 specifically has brought something completely new, and that's the ability to use HE grenades to break smokes temporarily. In CSGO, we saw it took time for teams to wrap their heads around Molotovs. It took well over a year for teams to realize that using Molotovs were effective, and even longer to figure out denying them with smokes created more opportunities. Since the benefits around breaking smokes with HEs are much more clear, teams were quick to try the mechanic in various ways. The most common was to break the bottom banana smoke, but there were also other applications such as breaking the smoke when the retake nades came down. As players continue to explore the mechanic, the possibilities seem endless. With the full transition to CS2, we have to wonder what banana control might look like in a year, or maybe even 5 years. Only time will tell. But what the history of Inferno Banana Control in CSGO has really shown is that the meta and Counter-Strike evolves with time. When we look at how simple it used to be, we can see exactly how each tactic layers onto the next. When the map changes, it's clear that we don't start from zero. The previous learnings are used to lay the foundation so that new tactics can be built. And with those new tactics, we start re-evaluating what we thought was good before. We test the boundaries of our knowledge and as we become more creative, we might find something that shifts our approach. As time goes on, the meta only becomes more and more complex. But how it's evolved in these past 10 years serves as an indicator as to just how far this game has come. And Counter-Strike 2 marks a new beginning. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.